Hi, and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. As always, I'm your host, James Duffy, and here, the Rudolph to my Santa, Carlo Peruzza. How you doing, Carlo? Doing great, man. Can yeah. we do another show? We always look forward to this time of the week where we get together and, and put together our highlights oh, yeah. of, of what's been going on here at USCB, um, on and off the field mm -hmm. when we can, and covering everything we got. Uh, we're getting ready to wrap it up. We'll probably have one more show this year as we start to preview the spring season mm -hmm. sports, but uh, we got to wrap everything up from the fall before we move forward. And uh, big red, well, two big ones to wrap it up, but the yeah. most important one was that uh, Sandtrack Soccer went to the playoffs and has come home. Yeah, I mean, they go over to Southeastern and play a very, very good team. Which had just, they'd just been here and played us and beat us 9-1 to one here at home. Yeah. We go on the road as the number seven seed in the tournament conference, uh, playing the number two seed, and um, it was not pretty. It was an 8 to w eight to nothing uh, mm -hmm. end finish to the game. Uh, Coach Heberling in the second half made some dramatic changes to his lineup, tried to see what he could do, try to mix things up, and uh, while we got the ball into the... The, the, the far third, we didn't get any into the last little, last 10 feet that you need to make it in right. red goal. Um, but it was a great season overall. It really was a great season. I mean, I'm going to miss the seniors that yeah. we gra were about to graduate in May. Karen Pimentel, um, MJ Ordunia, Haley Pena, to name a few. Like, those are big time players that pretty much all made an impact since their freshman year here. Yeah, and, and, and it's just crazy. Peeney's going to stay in the on. record book for a long oh, time, yes. probably. So uh, I mean, I hope somebody breaks it because that means we have a stud we bring in. But I don't know, Haley's, Haley's something else. She's been tough and uh, really d doing it, doing a number. Uh, you got to write those records in pencil. Uh, mm -hmm. Just remember to, so you can get them out when you need to change them. And uh, so it was, it was a good run, good season. And uh, we're, we're going to look forward to more from next year and to see more what uh, Coach Heberling will put mm -hmm. as a starting 11 next August. It's, uh, it's going to be a long time to wait, but it'll seem like it's oh, yeah, right upon fly us. By. And, uh, think about the changes that are going to happen between now and then. I'm not even going to be here. You're not even going to be here. Uh, when, when soccer kicks off next year, we'll be uh, opening the Hilton Head campus, the third of wow. our three campuses. Nice. Uh, we'll be rededicating the Buford campus with its new uh, you know, uh, residential facility that they're going to open up up there. Um, lots of changes will be happening and um, it all comes through support of people like you watching at home, alumni like you mm -hmm. who will be donating back to the university. Um, all those things that, that keep this place open and running. We, uh, this isn't our telethon day, but uh, we appreciate yeah, any, any support you can give us. Uh, the show has generated some some donations before, and uh, the one most notable one is that on one show uh, a couple of years ago, I mentioned that we needed a new javelin, and uh, Ashley Lehman's dad came through with a javelin <laughs> for the track and field team. Um, so That's if fine. you're if you're sitting home here at the end of the year and looking to fill in your charitable donations before filing your taxes in April, make sure you put uh, USCB in that that memo line. Anyhow. Uh, soccer's done. Thanks. It was a great season. We really, really enjoyed watching it all. Uh, some real highlights from this year and these players. And, and the other team that comes to wrap it up is, uh, well, track and field wrapped it up, too. That was not part of our plan in the rundown, but yeah, we're going to go right into track and field. No, we're not. We're going to skip track and field because there's no golf. track and field. We're going to talk about cross country, but let's go to golf. Golf we've got to make up for because they were playing as we recorded last week's show. Uh, we didn't even know that they were playing for certain, but it was a, 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 an invitational that uh, had been postponed because mm -hmm. of our hurricane evacuation. It was a coastal Georgia invitational. And um, highlights from that? Newport LaParachka finished Newport third La place. Get always kid yeah. is unbelievable. I'm you know, you. He, he had some success last year, but it really seems like he's totally adjusted to that college level. And honestly, Newport Laparachka, there's no reason why he can't be considered as one of the best golfers in the NAIA. Like, he is a national champion golfer. He is extremely good, amazing. So this season, four tournaments, first place, second place, 10th, third place. <laughs> like, that's not, <laughs> not bad. Not too shabby. That's not too bad. Not too shabby at all. Uh, Keith, Keith Murphy Keith gets Murphy uh, comes in fourth. fourth overall, the USCB men's team. Uh, second overall yeah. in this tournament. Keith's another one. He's um he's looked really good this year. Him and Will Knipe have really stepped up from last year. And what I love about the golf team, I've said it a couple times on the show, they are so young, and we're going to have this team for years to come. Even though Will Knipe looks like he's about forty or forty-five, <laughs> he, uh, he is he's only he's still not yet of age to drink yeah. legally. Um, 
And uh, yeah, the, the seems that like all, all the time out in the sun walking around, I guess maybe ages those guys a little bit faster than some of our other. And we got some uh, Canadians on that team and too. The Canadians so. too. So yeah, uh, great great spot. We're catching up with Carlo last Absolutely, week. Yeah, uh, yeah, seeing the Canadians. Um, so that's where we are. The second over team wins second. Newport's third overall. Keith's fourth overall. And now cross country. That's now. where that's where I meant to go when I said track and field earlier. Um, cross country went to the Sun Conference Championships mm -hmm. down in uh, Ave Maria, Florida. Um, we didn't expect to, to get a lot of the high finishing yeah. numbers there. We did expect to see that, that what we have coming up is a lot of potential in these young teams, both on the men's side and the women's side. Um, Coach Gaither will be talking about that in just a minute um, with you. I have messed up our rundown altogether, haven't I, Carl? I'm you sorry. Have, it's, it seems seamless to you at home, but uh, <laughs> I'm messing things up left and right here. Um, but uh, we do want to mention is that that the, the headline out of the, the the conference tournament is at the at the banquet beforehand. They award um, all academic, all conference or mm -hmm. academic all conference awards, and we had. Three from the women's cross country team: uh, Hannah Johnson, Rachel Purcell, and uh, Laura Lauren Trigonin. Trigonin, which I can ever never get right. <laughs> um, and so, congratulations to all of them. Academic or academic all conference honors is what they got. Uh, we like smart teams. Mm -hmm. We um, are student athletes at the end of the day. Student comes first, right? Mm -hmm. Any coach will tell you that. Um, and that's all the real sports that have been happening. There's not to say that softball is a fake sport, but they're not playing games, but they right. are out in the community. I do want to take the time to note that um, we've been playing baseball and softball in Hardyville for 10 years now, and uh, about 10 years, we're heading into our 10th season of uh, baseball and the sixth season of softball. But we like Hardyville. We like yeah. them a lot. Oh we yeah. uh, we like the facility they built for us. Um, we'd rather have our own facility here on campus. Again, if you've got, the got some, some money, money sitting around, uh, call us. Give me a call. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it towards our new new facility that we're looking to build here. Um, but I'm just making plugs for money all day here. <laughs> Don't have a lot of headlines. But uh, working with the Parks and Recreation Department in Hardyville, the softball team went out and volunteered to help with Trunk or Treat on Halloween. They served over 500 kids that came right. through there, and they had a real good time out there. Then they followed it up with Saturday, their own fundraiser, working, working to raise a little money internally for the softball team. Uh, they had their annual hit-a-thon and costume contest. Uh, Caleb Boyle. Oh, Caleb Boyle. Uh, Ron as, Burgundy. As Ron Burgundy was. Uh, if you that was a good costume. It, that was a good costume. Um, uh, Alexa Moore hit the furthest mm -hmm. with 240 feet, Kayla, and um, uh, Caroline Heaton got uh, second place with 235, yeah. um, tying for second place, and uh, at 220, Kenny Crosby and Natasia Hatcher. Natasia Hatcher. And so, uh, if you donated money, if you if you pledged to buy the foot, uh, you're going to be emptying your pockets out. They took a few players took me for about 77 dollars on this wow. one. Wow! So uh, Look at that. yeah, I'm I'm paying up for that one. Um, and uh, but I love that softball team oh and, yeah. and all those players on there. I'm really uh, excited to watch them play this season. I think we really have a lot of potential on that team, and it's still such a young team. But the players, we've got some real student leaders on there. We're talking about Caleb yes. Boyle, talking about Ab Abby Pack, Taylor who been here, Boykin, who have been here a couple of years now, and um, some of these younger players who are coming up: Caitlin O'Hearn, Haley Hawkins, mm -hmm. um, these the, the sophomores that'll be um, that really made a splash last year, and hopefully are going to mature a little bit this year. And um, we'll be we'll be hoping for a lot from them, but um, yeah, softball hasn't started yet. They will start uh, February third here it's at home. Up. Baseball will start February second, um, but we, we want to do a little wrap up show next week. We'll talk about yeah, the, the upcoming yeah. upcoming schedule for baseball and softball down in Hardyville. Um, but since we talked about cross country already, we need to now hear from. Coach Gaither, who will uh, mention cross country, but really he's here to talk about track and track, field, yep. which is going to start up again uh, November 18th with a pole vaulting, inside pole vaulting competition. So uh, let's kick it to the Coach Gaither with our eminent host, Carlo Peruzza, interviewer. Hi, I'm here with USCB cross country and track and field coach Bernard Gaither. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, and you? Great, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely, so 
Well, first off, let's talk about cross country. Cross country season just ended. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a recap of your thoughts of this cross country season? Okay, it was most definitely a rebuilding year for us. We had um, on the men's side, we brought in a lot of freshmen. Uh, we had one senior leader, uh, Christian Slayton, who was returning for us, and he's uh, he was a, a great help for us, leading the way. Um, he got injured um, halfway through the season and wasn't able to finish the season as strong as he would he would have liked or we would have liked, but. Um, you know, those things happen. So he'll be recovering and getting ready for indoor and, and outdoor season where I think that he'll have some great marks. Um, we had uh, Wesley Murphy, who was a freshman phenom for us and really um, did well, got second team all conference this year. Uh, and then on the girls side, it was most definitely um, a rebuilding year as well. We lost uh, four of our top five scores from last year. And so uh, it's hard to replace those, those girls and so, um, the, the young ladies that we had were walk-ons. They stepped up to the challenge and they did the best as they could, so. Right. Speaking of Wesley Murphy, when I watched you guys, I felt like he had the ability to be, I guess, one of the, the star athletes of this team for the next years to come. Is that something you agree? Do you think this guy's gonna break out and become a premier runner at this school? I, I do. I believe that uh, Wesley Murphy's future is very, very bright. Um, I explained to him this, this summer that I think that he can be up there among the ranks of the, the Anthony Vecchios and, and the Nick O'Neills, um, that he has that, that potential in him, that uh, Coach Kimball saw the same thing. Uh, we a lot of times compare him to Edward Cheserek, uh, the runner from Oregon. And so he, once again, he just gets stronger and stronger as he goes on. So we're very excited to have Wesley Murphy here uh, being a Sand Shark, and we think that he's going to do some awesome things for us. Right, that's awesome. All right, so now let's go to the track and field side of things. Mm -hmm. So you guys are getting ready for the indoor season. What mm -hmm. have you been doing to prepare your guys and girls for that? Well, uh, as soon as we came back to campus, we, we got right into conditioning. So we've been conditioning since, since August. Our first official day of practice was in, in October, and uh, the kids are, are primed and ready to go. So we, um, we have a indoor meet that's coming up on the 18th of November. That would be strictly the pole vaulters. And then on December 2nd, we're going to take a small select few back up to Winston-Salem, North Carolina for our, our first indoor meet. And then we'll go through Christmas break and then re-evaluate, um, re re reassess where everybody's at for the rest of indoor and hopefully make a run at our, at our nationals. And that's going to be in March. And then we'll transition right into outdoor. So exciting things that, um, that are up for us in, in the, the future for, for indoor track. We're excited mm -hmm. about it. That's awesome. Could you please preview um, certain athletes or certain event groups that you feel that people should really watch out for this mm -hmm. year in both the indoor and outdoor season? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, the sprint core is, is very, very strong on, on the women's side, mm -hmm. uh, led by Jahari, and Jahari Williams and Maya Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, Faith, and Faith Calloway and <coughs> excuse me, uh, Cortinasia Mutcherson are also going to um, do great in the, the 200 and the 400. We also have a junior transfer, Amara Nicholson, that I think will be able to step up and uh, really contribute. Uh, our our pole vault group with Coach McDaniels is they they are chomping at the bit. They they're are the char their characters are quite the interesting. Yes, group. they are, the, and that's that's pole vaulters. Pole <laughs> vaulters are the um, they, they're the wild ones. They're the crazy ones, uh, and you do you have to you have to ha be a little bit crazy. The to Hutchison run. twins. Yes, you got to be a little bit out there to run down as fast as you can a yeah. runway and stick a, a, a pole into the box and then go and invert. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, so they, they are always interesting, but they're really, really good athletes. And so really looking forward to them breaking a lot of school records this year. Uh, we have a junior transfer, Jonathan Graham, who I think will qualify for nationals very, very soon um, into the season or very quickly into the season. So uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, throws are always strong with Coach Sitterson. So we're, we are going to be pretty strong when, when it comes to indoor and outdoor. That's awesome. So last season, obviously, you guys had a lot of success mm -hmm. winning the Sun Conference Championship for both the women and the men's. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys are at a point where you can repeat that this season? I think most definitely for the women's side, we are, we're most definitely stronger on the women's than we are on the men's side. The men's side, even last year, was going to be a dogfight. We knew that, that it was going to come down to our throws and it was going to come down to pole vault. And this year, it'll be the same thing. It's going to be the throws and the pole vault and everybody playing their position, you know, stepping up and, and, and making, making things happen in their event. Uh, the women's side, we, we're really strong. Uh, we went from 53rd in the nation to 13th in the nation. Uh, 
at the and so I, I think that at the national level we can also contend mm -hmm. and so that's really what we're gearing for is um, looking not looking past conference but uh, looking to do well at conference on our way to doing well at nationals all right all right I appreciate it we're all looking very forward to the upcoming season mm -hmm. I'm Carlo Peruza please stay tuned to Sand Shark Bites at the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Another quality interview right yeah. there. Put that in the reel. Um, yeah. So we've come to the end of our show, and, and the last thing we, we have to do is uh, give the player of the week. And uh, this we could have gone a couple of different ways mm -hmm. with this. We had a little talk about it earlier, but uh, you know, right now what we want to make sure to remind people of is that we put the scholar and scholar athlete. Yep. So it's going to be a three-way tie. So this week it's players. Players of the week. Of the week. So we got Anna Johnson, Rachel Purcell, and Lauren Tribuni, you guys are all players of the week. Congratulations. That's for, for winning the, the academic All-American or All-Conference mm -hmm. at, uh, at the cross-country, what, Sun Conference cross-country tournament mm -hmm. this past week. I mean, when I was talking to Coach Gaither before we, I just did the, the interview that we just did, we were talking about the importance of being a school student athlete and he was pretty much telling me he's like you're stu you're a student athlete you need to put the student part in there that's the most important part yep and for that we'll give you the one last for the week mm -hmm. fins up 